here stands your servant. Yonder sits your people. God, we, we give you glory and we give you honor. We give you praise. Now, Lord, fill my mouth full of worthwhile stuff. And nudge me, Lord, when I've said enough. And let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory for all the good things that he continues to do and be in our lives. I want to talk with you for just a few minutes this gracious Lord's Day from the Acts of Apostles, chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. And there you will find these words, and they read thusly. Now when they had gone throughout Phygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they are saved to go into Bithynia but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passed by Mysia, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Amen. Let me visit with you and talk with you for just a few minutes, and would you consider these words? As a possible theme for our sub for our message today, would you consider these words? Paul's call into Macedonia. Paul's call into Macedonia. Paul had been planning to make a circuit through Asia Minor. This was a heavily populated area in that day. And it was really the center of Greek culture. This was a great educational area as well. Paul would have made a great circle by going through the Galatian country, then to Phygia, and then south into the province of Asia, and then back to Antioch to report to the home church. The Spirit of God had something, something else in mind. Let, let us survey a couple of three points in our text today. And, and I'll quickly get out of your lobes. The first thing I'd like to share with you was is simply the, the call of God. Yeah. Look there, if you will. Look there, if you will, back at 
verse 6 and 7. And when they had gone throughout Phygia and, and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they are saved to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Paul and, and his companions passed through the region of Galatia, probably visiting Iconium and Antioch, and, and, and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit from, from evangelizing Asia. They, they were also prevented by the Spirit from turning north into Bithynia. Luke does not indicate why the Spirit constrained Paul's plans or what method he made known the restrictions. The, res the Spirit forbade them from going south into the province of Asia. Then the Spirit forbade them to go north into Bithynia. He had come from the east. Where will he go? Well, there's only one direction left, and that is west. As Horace Greeley of the New York Post quoted, go west, young man. The Spirit ordered him westward to the sea, the coast of Troas that he might be ready to sail to, for Macedonia. In like manner, Abraham went out not knowing whether he went. In Hebrews chapter 11, and it reads thus, let me share this little, take, little piece of word with you. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterwards receive as an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. Truly, the, the, the footsteps of God's providence is not known. And, and, and with that, my brothers and my sisters, that, that leads me to, the, to my second point. The first point I've shared with you is the call of God. And my, my, my second point is simply this, the appeal from man. In verse 9, verse 9 shares with us, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia. And help us. The vision appeared to Paul in the night. We need not wait for the night in order to have a vision or to hear a voice in which men cry, Come over and help us. God gave Paul a vision to communicate his will for the direction of his ministry. Just as he had done with Peter back there in chapter 10. Come over and help us. If we had but the ear to hear the still, sad music of humanity. We should have bore to us on every wind that pitiful plaint of sin-stricken children of men. We should hear the cry of conscience, spiritual distress. There are those, ladies and gentlemen, who know the hollowness 
of their own superstitions or as vanity as vainly looking out for the truth from those who are grouping in the darkness. We may well hear the cry and who will lead us into the light of life. The prayer of in, inarticulate distress there are countless multitudes that hunger and thirst for they know not what. They are empty. They are aching. They are longing hearts with boundless capacities. These hearts unsealed, unsatisfied, and they are intricately but earnestly pleading for the bread of life of which men may eat and be filled with hope from on high and shall never hunger anymore. There are also the vast multitude of the suffering of the sick, of the lonely, of the disappointed, and of the bereaved. These are praying us with silent but strong supplication to send the knowledge of the divine, of the divine comforter to him who alone can bind up the broken heart and heal its wounds. Thus it seems Paul was restricted from preaching in other places. Verse 6 and 7 reminds us, and when they had gone through Phygia and regions of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they are saying to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Because God had plans for him to go and evangelize Macedonia. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that leads me to my third and final point. Let me hear it and share this with you. The third and final point here is the evangelistic team. Look there, if you will, at verse 10. He says, and after we had seen the vision immediately, we endeavor to go into Macedonia. Assured the gathering that the Lord had called us to preach, for to preach the gospel unto them. After Paul had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Kind folks, note the text says, we endeavored to go. Are you listening? We endeavored to go. We've never had we before. It has always been they or them, or he, or him. But what about we? The we likely indicates that Luke joined the evangelistic team. It is really quite a quartet. There may have been others alone also, but we have four whose names are named in the book. Paul, Silas, Timothy, and now Dr. Luke. When connected together, the we passage forms a continuous geographical, geographical narrative. Most likely Luke's own memories are no 
notes he took. Let me not hold you too long, but let me pose a closing question to you. What are the lessons which we may learn for ourselves from this historical analysis? I'm glad you asked that because I'm excited to tell you. From the way in which the Apostle Paul was more than once kept from going where he had intended kept from going into the province of Asia, kept from entering into Bithynia, and was led on where he seemed never to have intended to go to accomplish a mighty purpose. We learn how God may disappoint his people now in regards to some plan of usefulness which may which he may have in view. Another truth which we are reminded of is this, that this vision was given to Paul. The man of Macedonia calling out to him to come over and help us. So there's a, there is a call, there are calls of the same nature continuously being made upon all believers. We need no vision to remind us of because they are really, they are a reality with which we are acquainted. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sin's breakers dash trying to conquer my soul. But he promised never to leave us. Oh, never to leave us. Never to leave us alone. And there's one, one other lesson.